Hey there, interwebs, and welcome back to Flag Shaming. It's time to shame some flags. Number 41, Montana. This was their state flag from 1905 to 1981, but hold up, are we sure this is the flag of Montana? That state seal could belong to anywhere. Oh, okay, yes, I see now they've written their name on it to clear up any confusion. Shame! And minus one for that blue field. The seal has mountains and the Great Falls of the Missouri River in the background, and to represent mining, the foreground shows a pick and shovel over the state motto, Oro y Plata. Before I reveal my redesign, I just want to say that I, PurpleSkull14 on Twitter, who use this as my personal flag with its prominent use of purple, skull towards the fly, and jagged mountain shapes towards the hoist, have nothing to declare about this flag. Montana comes by way of Spanish from Latin for mountainous country. Their motto is Spanish for gold and silver, so some of the color choices were incredibly obvious. I made a gold and silver mountain joined together to form an M for Montana and mountains. Their nickname is the Big Sky State, so I wanted to dedicate most of the flag to the sky. It was originally a dark royal blue, but then I noticed that's perilously close to being a boring blue field and changed it to a regal purple, because I hate blue and love purple. Throughout the course of this series, I've discovered that a lot of states have de facto symbols. Some of them put them on their flag, like California's bear or South Carolina's palmetto, but most don't, like Pennsylvania's keystone or Massachusetts' pine tree. Montana's in the second group, and their symbol is the bison skull. It's a very striking and badass symbol, sacred to many of the state's native tribes, such as the Crow and the Northern Cheyenne. They put it on their schools, businesses, license plates, and prominently on their state quarter. I put it on their flag where it belongs, and made it the same colors as the mountains. Number 42. Washington. This is the final one of the four flags that are only the whole state seal with wording and a solid field, but at least the field isn't blue or even white. Thank Guan Yin for small mercies, and do I really need to even explain what's going on here? Shame! The design was adopted on June 7th, 1923, and a version created by the Daughters of the American Revolution was unfurled on Flag Day a week later. On that subject, the Flag Act of 1818 specified that new versions of the American flag will only be adopted on the 4th of July, and new state flags are just adopted whenever. Why are we not adopting new flags on Flag Day? What the hell else are we going to do with that holiday? Independence Day has parades, barbecues, swilling flavorless domestic beer, and blowing off fingers with fireworks, usually in that order. Let Flag Day have flags! Washingtonians love their green field, probably because it's currently unique among state flags, so I kept it, or at least half of it. I split the flag down the middle with George Washington's profile, the way the state is split by the Cascade Mountain Range, creating two very different climates. Yes, this is the same trick I used on New Hampshire's flag. Deal with it. To the hoist is the wet, rainy west, and to the fly lies the drier, arid east. The blue star and its position on the canton represents Puget Sound with respect to Washington, but also the state of Washington with respect to the nation, as both are in the respective upper lefts. This is also why it's pointing to the upper left. Then I took a nap, woke up, realized I hated this design, and made this one instead. Same blue star, same green field, but now it has a blue stripe along the bottom to represent the Columbia River. It's also a W for Washington, and the Columbia even looks a little like a W too, if you tilt your head. Beneath it is a series of white peaks representing the Cascade Mountains. This looks much better to me, and just goes to show what a good nap and a fresh start can do for the creative process. Number 43, Idaho. Like Washington, this flag also uses the entire state seal, word ring and all, but also includes its name on a hard-to-read banner on that solid blue field, minus one. Shame! I actually have to hand it to Idaho. This may be the first seal I've seen to have picture in picture. Usually the crest, supporters, and compartment aren't part of their own image. The charge is a second, different landscape. The plowman represents the state's agriculture, the pine tree on the other side represents the state's timber interests, and the Snake River runs between the two. Beneath the escutcheon is a wheat sheaf flanked by cornucopias, symbolizing horticultural abundance. The crest is a decapitated, or should I say decorporated, elk, and strangely it seems to be the happiest thing on this seal, because the miner and the woman appear to be a married couple who just got into a fight and aren't speaking to each other for the time being. The miner symbolizes Idaho's mineral wealth and their chief industry when they gained statehood. The woman, with her scales and Phrygian cap, stands for equality, liberty, and justice. Strange that New York represents liberty and justice as two different figures, but they're one here. I like how Idaho felt they needed two cornucopias, a sheaf of wheat, and a farmer to symbolize agriculture, but this poor woman has to hold down three jobs at once. She must represent single mothers as well with that workload. The state flower, mock orange, grows beside her, and above is a banner with the state motto, Esto Perpetua, or Let It Be Forever. A banner below the seal helpfully informs us that this flag belongs to the state of Idaho, even though the seal already has State of Idaho written on it. The whole thing is a hideous, redundant mess. 
All of Idaho's wealth and fame comes from underground in the forms of gems and potatoes. Look, when you say Kentucky, people think derby and bluegrass. When you say Idaho, they think potatoes. Idaho, you're lucky you're on a bit of mineralogically fascinating terrain. You're the gem state, and the state gem is star garnet, which is only found in Idaho and remote India. The state's mountains are also home to other rare minerals such as opal, jade, topaz, jasper, zircon, and tourmaline, as well as great seams of valuable metals including gold, silver, copper, cobalt, zinc, and lead. Not many people know this, but one in three residents of Idaho is actually a dwarf. This design recognizes that Idaho is the gem state, as in the state is the gem in the crown of the U.S., so the mountain peaks form the shape of a crown. The colors are red, white, and blue because Murica, but they're specifically garnet and cobalt blue because those are both mined in abundance in Idaho. The icon in the center is a bad artist's representation of star garnet. The bad artist is me. I also made this flag, which takes the term a jewel in the crown a bit more metaphorically. The antlers come from the seal's elk, and in older writings, a creature's antlers were referred to as its attire or its crown. Placed in between them is that same icon, and the field is beige because I was looking for an earthy color without being too dark, or blue because minus one. It's still a bit seal on a bed sheety for my taste, so I made this one which incorporates agriculture as well as mineralogy. The green spout is a potato plant just coming up. I went with the leaves for a lot of reasons, chief among them being that it's impossible to draw a simplified potato without it looking like a literal piece of crap. Of the three, I have to say antlers is my favorite. Number 44, Wyoming. The only thing more irritating than a bad flag is a good flag that's been ruined. Wyoming, you were so close to having a winner, but then you had to go and slap that god-awful seal on it, complete with the outer words. Shame! In addition to Tampa, this is the only other flag of which I know that has more colors in its field than the seal atop it. The red symbolizes the Native Americans and the blood of pioneers who gave their lives, while the white is a symbol of purity and uprightness. The blue is the color of the skies and a symbol of justice and fidelity. The bison represents bison and other local fauna. Wikipedia says the seal on the bison symbolizes the custom of branding livestock, but I think it's just symbolic of the incompetence of flag committees. I took the liberty of scrubbing it off for you, then did something about that border. It's not terrible, but in my opinion it makes your lovely flag look more like a rug. I turned it into a pair of red bars at the top and bottom, and you've still got the white symbolizing purity and righteousness in the bison. Next! Number 45. Utah. Jesus Odinson Christ, deliver me from these terrible designs! First of all, blue field, minus one. Now for the seal. As I said when discussing George's design, good flags are distinct. Bad flags have other, better flags on them. If you've got the American flag on your flag, then shame on your flag! Also, if you're shooting for the most stars award, you're losing to Missouri by 17. In addition to its American flag supporters, its crest is a bald eagle because Murica! In all seriousness, though, Utah didn't get to be a state until roughly four decades after it was first settled by the Mormon pioneers because they were believed to be disloyal to the country. Those petitioning for statehood included the national symbols on their flag to deflect those claims. If you look closely at the flags, you'll see a total of 45 stars, since Utah was the 45th state, but that's 45 in total. The left flag has 23 stars, and the right only has 22. Who do you think you are, Maine? The charge is a beehive surrounded by the state flower, seago lily. Above, we have the state motto, and below, the state name in 1847, the year Mormon pioneers entered the Salt Lake Valley. Beneath all that is 1896, the year Utah finally became a state. Here's something you should understand. The honeybee is the official state insect of no fewer than 17 states, but Utah is the beehive state. Bees are their thing. Louisiana has the fleur de lis, Pennsylvania is the keystone state, Texas is the lone star state, and California is the bear flag republic. That's what the bee is to Utah. If you see a bee on something state-related, the smart money's on Utah. That's why bees are on their flag, and that's why I made the redesign striped black on yellow. Four bars of yellow make five black bars. Together, you've got four and five for the 45th state. The counter-changed shapes on either side are the state flower and stand for 1847 and 1896, when the Mormon pioneers entered the Salt Lake Valley and when Utah became a state. In early designs, they were stars, but I changed them to flowers because you can't have bees without flowers. Kill your lawn! Dead center, you've got the beehive, because you gotta have the beehive. The state seal has six arrows beneath the eagle, and I don't know what they represent, but I presume they must stand for something besides simply power, and that's why the beehive has six layers. That's all for now, folks, but I'll be back next weekend for the final five states. If you want to discuss these redesigns in the meantime, the link to the subreddit is, as always, in the description. So is the link to my Twitter, where I sometimes post random flag-related thoughts and images. And don't forget that How Fascinating comes out on Wednesday. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.